One of the biggest things that we offer to our community is education and skill building opportunities. As far as like production, live sound teching for bands, or making podcasts, or hosting your own show. And then we offer programming that reflects the diversity of Greater Victoria's communities. So we hire within our communities as well. So that's another way that we contribute. We've had volunteers end up at the CBC through podcasting or from jobs here, but also volunteers that did shows end up working at like NPR in the States and like commercial stations as well. So like they use that as like the same as going to broadcast school. All of our expenses are accounted for in our budgeting that's approved by our board of directors. We have about 50 to 60 percent of our annual budget is comes directly from students. And then in addition to that, we fundraise 10 percent of our annual budget through our funding drive. And we fundraise primarily for purchase and, and maintenance of equipment. You can imagine with all that we need to run a radio station, we have to be replacing things all the time. And then we apply for grants throughout the year, and those usually go towards funding part time staff positions. And we also receive a small amount of advertising revenue. We've sort of waived that right now. So rather than collecting advertising revenue from local businesses, we're offering that for free to sort of support that economic recovery. We never have all of our eggs in one basket, in a sense, and diversifying our, our revenue sources so that we're not reliant on one thing coming through. Um, we make sure that we sort of have our stable base and then from there we branch out and try to fund sort of more short-term projects. We're independent, so we have no corporate stakeholder um, that determine like what we play or what stories get aired. Um, that is truly like decided by community. It's truly a voice of community, and so that's an incredible opportunity. We're a registered nonprofit society in BC, so I don't think anyone actually ever owns it because it's board of directors on there, and those can always change every year. The staff answer to the board of directors, and the board of directors answer to the volunteers. A lot of the way things flow is actually things don't trickle down, but rather trickle up and policy is created to represent the needs of the station. Our volunteers elect their board. There's no secret stakeholder. Um, I think challenges for me in my role is always going to be barriers to access. Who isn't here? Whose voice is not being heard and why? If we see a demographic that's missing, we ask ourselves, why aren't they here and what can we do better? I feel like other challenges that uh, the grant funding, like, because it's not always like a secure form of funding, we're investing that into like so many like projects or social benefit projects as well. What we're licensed to do is to provide programming that's, that differs in style and substance from that provided by other elements of the broadcast industry. We work to elevate and amplify marginalized and underrepresented communities within our music library. We catalog things specifically so people can, for example, search for music by women trans non-binary artists. Because we know that there is an underrepresentation of folks marginalized by gender within the music industry. 